Hello and welcome to this video. So carrying on from the last video, what I'd like to do in this one is be able to create a trade and also set a stop loss and take profit. Now in our live bot, we're not going to use a stop loss and take profit because I'm going to go for the simplest example of possible and which is the uh, the moving average crosses. But nevertheless, I'd like to show you in Oanda's case here, how you can go about doing it. Now this kind of thing is very, very platform specific. Obviously it depends on the API. But in the case of Oanda, I find the API really, really good, but I find the ordering process a little bit confusing, com particularly when it comes towards uh, buy stops, sell stops and take profits and things. So going to the Oanda web trading platform, I'm just going to make a trade to show you one of the issues. If I have 100 units of Euro US dollar and let's have a 20 pip per take profit and stop loss and just submit the order. If we go to the activity, we can see that we've had three tickets. We've put the original trade on, but then we've had the take profit and then the stop loss placed as separate uh, API calls. And this is an important thing to note. So when we look at the examples in the documentation of orders on Oanda, we can see the one we've looked at, which is the Euro US dollar buy. There's the sell with minus 100 units here. And then we can see we've got this create a take profit order. Now you might think, okay, I'm going to trade something with the take profit at 1.60000. But then of course there's the trade ID here. So you might say, well, how can I have the trade ID if I haven't placed the trade yet? And in fact, what you need to do is place the trade and then place the stop loss and then place the take profit or either or, whichever one you need as a separate API request. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make an alteration to the place trade and we're going to give ourselves the option of having a take profit and a stop loss. And they'll be set by default to none. And if they're not none, we know we need to set either or one of these. So the way this works is when we've made our original API request to uh, set the trade, we get the integer of the trade ID back here on what is line 94 at the moment. So what I'm going to do is say that the trade ID is equal to this integer here, and we're going to return the trade ID from the function. What I'm also going to do is I'm just going to set up here trade ID is equal to none. And this will mean that we'll return none if things don't work later on. Now what we need to do here is once we've got the trade ID is we need to be able to decide, do we need to place a stop loss or a take profit? And if we do place it, and that means another API call. So we're going to go up above place trade and we're going to write a new function. And this function is going to be called set SLP SLTP. So set stop loss take profit where we take in the price, the order type and the trade ID. Now the first thing we need to do there is have a URL which is exactly the same as the URL that we've already been using for the orders. The next thing we need is we need a data object much like we've got here. So I'm going to take this data object and just uh, paste this in here as well with the order. But the contents of the order here are going to change. And there are a couple of gotchas inside here as well. So back inside the Oanda documentation where they've got this example for a take profit order, I'm just going to copy the stuff that's inside here, go back into the code and paste it here. Now there are a couple of important things you need to note here. The first one is that the price and the trade ID are strings here. They're not numbers. They've got these speech marks around them. That means we need to convert the price that we're sending in into a string. So we need to put that surrounded by brackets and put str in front to say, please make me a string. I'm also going to do exactly the same thing for the trade ID that we're going to send in as well, that we're going to alter to set in this case, our take profit. I'm also going to replace the order type here or the take profit, sorry, with order type because it'll be stop loss in the case of a stop loss. Now, why did I say there was a gotcha with the price? You have to be very, very careful with the string price that you send into the Wanda API. So let's imagine that you have a bot where you're doing, say, you're going to place, I don't know, a trade at 1% above the current price. That might give you a price that looks like this. Now, if you send this price in, it has a granularity or number of digits that are bigger than the five digits that Oanda uses for the Euro US dollar. And this will not work, this API request. It'll fail. And in real life, you would then not set your stop loss or your take profit, which is obviously an extremely bad thing. So, for example, if I just go to the uh, pound Japanese yen on Oanda here, you can see that we're at three decimal places. If you try to set a price for the stop loss or take profit that's more than that, then the request will fail. Now you remember very early on in the course, we looked at the instruments URL for the account. And just to remind you where you get this uh, precision, you can see that there's a display precision here on, the, uh, on each of the instruments. Make sure you uh, take this into account when you're trying to build up your price. 
So enough of uh, droning on about that. We have the set stop loss uh, take profit. The thing we need to do now then is make our request. I'm just going to go down to the function below and just copy that because it's exactly the same code again. And now what we can do is we can just say that if the status code is not equal to uh, 201, then we'll return false. Otherwise, if it's OK, it means things worked and we can return true. So now down inside place trade, we can make the decision if a take profit is not none, then we can set our take profit. So we can say if self and set uh, take profit stop loss, and then we can send in our price, which isn't price, but it's uh, take profit. And here we're sending the type which we've already seen, which is take profit. And we can also send in the trade ID. And now if this is equal to false, then we know that we've had a problem and we've actually failed to set the uh, take profit in this case. So what we'll do is we'll just return none. We can do exactly the same thing then for the stop loss. So we'll say that if the stop loss is not none, then we can take that, paste that in here. In here, we want to type stop underscore loss like so and everything else uh, then should be working. Now, one thing I do want to point out about this code is the possibility of errors. If we walk through the process of, say, making a trade with a stop loss and take profit, we actually have three API requests. And every time you make an API request, it could fail. So your internet connection could go. If you're using a cloud service, that connection could go. The backend from Oanda could fail. Anything can go wrong when you're making these requests. Now, the first request we make, we return none if we didn't manage to place the trade. OK. But then let's imagine we've got take profit and stop loss. And let's imagine setting the take profit here failed. Well, we're returning none. So this isn't very good because we've actually placed a trade. We've got one active. Now, if we were sitting watching the screen, then we would see the trade. But if you're automated, then usually you're not. I'm not in the case of my automated programs. So you would have a bit of a problem here. You would have a trade with no take profit if you wanted a take profit. So we're going to add OK onto here. And if any of these two fail here, rather than return none here, I'm just going to put uh, OK is equal to false. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And then we can return the trade ID and the OK down the bottom. And what that means is when we call this function, if either of these go wrong, we'll have a trade ID, but OK will be false. And we can then decide what we want to do. We can either try and set these levels again, or we can close the trade using the trade ID. And this way of handling these errors is pretty bad. It's a very, very quick and dirty solution just to keep the videos rolling on. But please, if you're using real money, you have to write yourself some code that deals with all of the possibilities of these requests failing elegantly, depending on what you want to do with your bot. So with that lecture over with, what we can do now is go into runner.py and just see if we can manage to make a trade with a stop loss and they take profit. So inside runner.py, the first thing we're going to do is take, set a take profit and We'll put the take profit at uh, 1.194. And what we should get now with a little bit of luck is if I run the uh, runner and trade, then we've got the trade. We've returned 164 for the ID and true. So everything seemed all right. And then if I look on Oanda itself, you can see that the long trade has been placed and I've got my take profit at 1.194. So that's good. So I just close that trade off. We'll go back into the code. And what I'd like to do now is place a stop loss, but not an actual take profit. So we'll go down to 1.174, uh, that uh, should be low, and also take off that extra equals there. Just break out of the program, run it again, press T to make a trade. And now we have trade 170 in true. And we can see indeed we've got the trade on here and now we've got the stop loss right down by 1.174. Let's close that. And I guess you can guess what we're going to do next. Back in the code, we'll just place uh, a take profit again and set that to 1.194 again. Just go into runner, quit out, run again, trade, and 176, and true. And indeed, in Oanda, we've got the trade placed with our take profit and our stop loss. Good. So we're able now, using the API, to place a trade and place a stop loss and also place a take profit as we need, which is the first step, obviously, in uh, getting an automated trading bot. The next thing I'd like to look at is actually using the API to close a trade. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. That's it for this video and see you in the next one.